serious. For people that experience night terrors, what's been your worst dream? I had a really bad night terror in high school after I went home early from school that same day with a fever of 103 degrees Fahrenheit. I used to have night terrors frequently as a child, but now that I'm older, I only have night terrors whenever I get really sick. It turns out that extremely high fevers can cause me to have night terrors. About an hour after I went to sleep, I remember waking up, hyperventilating, crying, turning on my bedroom lights, and trying to remember where I was, even though I was at home in my bedroom. I kept on screaming for my mom because I was so confused, afraid, sick, and exhausted. I remember walking into the hallway and getting a glass of water to try and calm myself down, but it just didn't help. I was pacing around in circles, trying to make sense of what was happening. At the time, I actually knew it was a night terror deep down, but I couldn't do anything to stop it at the time. My mom, hearing my screaming, came running out of her bedroom and carefully tried to calm me down by talking to me. She hugged me and said things like, It's okay. You're just having a night terror, and you're at home, you're safe, this is your bedroom. I gradually stopped crying as she helped me back to my room, gave me medicine for my fever, gave me another glass of water, and she stayed with me until I was able to stop crying. I think I fell back to sleep shortly after that. The next morning I apologized for waking my parents up, because my mom and dad both had work the next morning, and I had my night terror around close to midnight but they both said it wasn't my fault and that it was okay. I still remember turning on the light, falling on my bedroom floor and screaming like hell. It was terrifying. I don't have night terrors anymore, but I used to as a kid and my worst one was a series that happened about every night. It would usually start with me, my brother, and a couple of other kids. Some were familiar, but most were just random. We would all be stuck in a creepy place and have to escape. It was always white, like it was a laboratory, but it was an office building. We would make our way through, and while doing so, a lot of the kids would get killed, usually by falling off some ledge, but sometimes it was by getting locked in somewhere you couldn't escape. At the end, it would always end roughly the same time, with us left alive looking at a double set of clear glass doors. Go through one, and then there's another where three witches would stand in between the first and final doors. Then it would always end the same. I'd jump at one of the witches, bite their neck, and they'd stab me in the neck with a shot that was lethal in my dream, and I'd slowly fade into unconsciousness. But before I did, every time without fail, they'd stab my brother in the back right through the heart and kill him while I screamed bloody murder. And then I'd wake up. I used to have a reoccurring dream where I was in an empty office building, a really, really tall one. The atmosphere started to get yellowy brown and that was my sign to close all the blinds, put furniture in front of the windows and anything else to obscure the windows. There was never enough time to finish before this giant bird showed up, circling around the building until it found the floor I was in. My only option to survive at that point was to hide right underneath the windowsill and be dead silent, hoping it wouldn't see me. In vain, because every time but one, the bird managed to spot me and rip me from my spot, finally ending my dream. This repeated itself a couple of times over a few years until one night. I managed to take control and run down, out the door and through the wasteland surrounding the building. It was a beautiful third person view, with the bird chasing me until I got into another building. That was the last time I had that dream. I used to experience them very often as a child slash teenager and had a few of them as a current adult. I would say that the worst one of them had to occur when I was between 8 and 10 years old. I am not sure how old I was exactly, but I was in a room with various people, kids to adults. The lighting in the room appeared blue with reddish hues. Many were standing around with some appearing to have conversations with each other. As I navigated this room, trying to make my way through the people, they would occasionally notice my presence and look down at me. And they had no faces. I was feeling a little scared, so I began to move through the increasing crowd faster until there was a room to the right of this long, narrow hallway. 
I couldn't see how long the hallway was. After a few feet, there was just this surrounding darkness. So I felt safe going into the room to my right. The room I entered looked to be rather dimly lit, seemingly empty bathroom. There was a toilet far back in the left corner of the room and one window near it. There was a shower curtain across the toilet, but there didn't seem to be a tub there. There was also one wheelchair in the middle of this room in front of this big wall mirror. It was positioned in the center of the room. When I looked to the window to see what was outside, there was just darkness. I then made my way to the wheelchair, and I was filled with this sense of childlike wonder and curiosity as to why there was a wheelchair here. I decided to sit on it, and I looked at my reflection from the mirror. I blinked a few times, with one blink taking me longer to open my eyes. And when they opened, I saw someone had appeared behind me and was standing there. I was looking at them through the reflection of the mirror and noticed they kind of looked like me. But I couldn't make out too many details of her face as they seemed blurry. She grabbed the handles of the wheelchair and began to shake the chair violently as I was freaked out because I could not get up from the chair. It felt like I was locked in place. I looked into the mirror and our reflections and at this point I'm crying and screaming, begging her to stop all around panic. Things look twitchy, like everything is moving so fast and I can't see too clearly. But her figure remains static, aside from her face, which is still blurry, but losing more recognizable facial features until there's nothing there. I wake up screaming and freaking out and my mom enters my room. I'm soaked in sweat and my bed is drenched in urine. That was the first and only time I had ever wet the bed. I often have sleep paralysis. The first time it happened was the worst. You don't have to believe this, but this was the most terrifying thing I've ever had happen to me. I was in bed with my arms behind my head sleeping. I woke up. I could look around but couldn't move my body and heard what sounded like pans dropping in the kitchen. My first thought was, there's someone in my apartment and my sister is on the couch. I need to get up. But since I couldn't move, I thought I was in shock and was practically yelling at myself to get up. Then I heard my bedroom door open. A man with a white shirt and blue tie walked in and stood just to the left of me in my peripheral view. Following him was many, many other men in the same outfit, about six feet tall, white shirt, blue tie. When I say many, I mean what looked like 30 men. The wall to my room extended out about 10 feet to fit them all in. I couldn't even see my dresser because they were covering it. None of them seemed to notice me laying there, so I stayed as still as I could. Then all at once they looked at me. They had no color in their eyes, just pupils. I could hear my heart beating. I could hear myself screaming at the top of my lungs for help. Then they all looked at the corner of my room on the right side of the foot of my bed. My eyes darted over to see what they were looking at, and when I looked back, they were all gone. Then I saw what is, to this day, the absolutely most terrifying, bone-shaking thing I've ever seen. A girl, about five foot four, black hair and white gown, with a Chelsea grin, cut from her mouth up to her ear, rose from the corner of the room by the foot of my bed. I closed my eyes because I knew it couldn't possibly be real. Mind you, I had no idea what sleep paralysis was at all, so I had no clue what the hell was happening. As my eyes were shut, I felt her crawl up my bed, like I felt this imaginary thing crawl up my body. The bed was being pushed down around my legs, and soon enough I felt her breath on my face. I opened my eyes, and she had her finger over her mouth, and she went, shh. But since she had cuts up her cheeks, the saliva dropped down while she did it. Then I felt what I can describe best as my blood flow returning to my arms and through the rest of my body as she crawled back into the corner of the room. I finally regained consciousness and felt my fingers move, then my legs, etc. I got up and ran to my sister on the couch and shook her awake and told her we needed to leave and she calmed me down and explained what happened 
and she told me about sleep paralysis. For some reason, after that night, I had it nearly every night. I had a pastor from a local church come by and bless my apartment. I'm not a very religious person, so it was a strange experience. Unfortunately, it wasn't very effective, though. My SP had calmed down a lot over the years. It only happens maybe twice a month now. But at least now I know what it is, so when I wake up, I'm not as scared. A lot of the times, it's things like snakes under my covers or wasps in my room. Most often, it's what I can only describe as shadow people. They're not as bad as the other hallucinations, but it's still freaky seeing someone walk around your room or walk into the closet. I was tied up in a chair with a sound of rustling surrounding me. A figure whispered something in my ear and I started to scream. They, I don't know the gender, decided to stab me in the chest. Then everything went black. I sat up, I wasn't awake yet and looked around the room. There was a checkered pattern on the floor, and I started to cry and try to remove myself before a bear walked in. He was half white, half black. I wanted to die. He proceeded to walk towards me as I try to leave the nightmare. He grabs my face and slams it to the ground, breaking my nose. My nose was bleeding, and he wiped it off, and licking it off his paw, I don't know why this happened. I screamed for him to leave, but he shushed me and made a deal with me. If I managed to stay quiet for the rest of the nightmare, he won't kill me. If I speak or make a sound, he will kill me. I disagreed and he smiled. With his ugly grin, he grabbed a lever and pulled it. A big chomped thing came out and ate me. I woke up, okay, we are now in real life, and started sobbing. My mom ran downstairs to check on me. And that's it. Mine was recurring at the same two times of year, in mid-July and at the end of October. There is a distinct feeling when a night terror starts for me, and I've felt similar sensations while awake, which is very unnerving to this day. But my night terror itself was recurring in appearance as well as time. There's nothing but a gradient from black at my peripheral vision to a white center point wherever I'm focusing. I can close my eyes and not see it, but it is still a constant whenever my eyes are open in the terror. There would be a constant tone that would be changing from high frequency to low frequency, but even then that doesn't really describe it. I've only ever been able to describe them in a way I feel adequate enough by calling them hard or soft sound waves. The heavier it got, the harder it became and would hurt me and the lighter it got, the softer it would become, and it comforted me. I would constantly shift between the two, slowly without end, for the entire duration of the night terror. Nowhere to run, nowhere to escape. Closing my eyes did not stop the sound, and eventually, the soft sound was so tormenting, I would feel pain then as well. My worst case involved sleepwalking to find my mother, and bring her to my room to wake me up, according to my family. But all the while experiencing my night terror. Allegedly, I walked into the living room and found my aunt and sister talking, and when they remarked that they thought I had been sleeping, with a fever, surprise, surprise, I told them I had fallen down the stairs and asked where my mother was and went to retrieve her. I still stand that there's nothing I fear more than the inside of my own mind because of my night terrors. From what I understand, they can be inherited from parents, not in likeness, but simply having them. My father's was a white sheet blowing in the wind on a clothesline outside his home in England. He grew up during World War II, so there's obvious stress points in his life there. His father told him, never met my grandfather since my father and I are 60 years apart as is, that his consisted of nothing but matches, endless fields of matches until one lit and everything engulfed in flames and then reset. I've seen professionals regarding my night terrors and they simply concluded that they were stress induced, but I don't know, an eight year old shouldn't be stressed enough for their brain to torture them while they sleep. In the dream, I was walking down an avenue that was a black cardboard ground with black material, like the backdrop for a puppet show. 
and there were neon outlines of trees on either side. Okay, pretty cool so far. So I'm walking and walking until I end up atop this very tall tower in the desert climate, and my boyfriend, now husband, was there, screamed at me for something, told me he never wanted to see me again, and went away. Okay, not great, but not the worst. Then I walked over to the edge of the tower and sat down. After I sat down, I started dismembering myself. So just pulling off bits of my body and tossing them down to the sands below until I was nothing but a torso and head. Then I looked down and saw the pile of writhing animated body parts beneath me. It wasn't just mine. It was as if a million others had done the same as I had. So I shifted my weight to fall atop the pile of parts and attempted to assert my will over all that was connected to me to make a giant creature to start some sort of life. But the thoughts and pains of all the others overwhelmed me and I was pulled into and absorbed by the monstrosity. I was lost and I drowned in the millions of consciousnesses. When I woke up, I was more upset about the boyfriend thing than the horrifying abomination thing though. When I joined the military, I moved out of my apartment and moved back into my parents' house during the month before I was to go to basic training. One night, I woke up and just had a horrible feeling of doom. I looked at my clock and it said 3.15. I sat up in bed and did a survey of my room trying to ascertain what was wrong. I became aware that whatever I was feeling was coming from my open closet. I laid back down and tried to just ignore the feeling. It wasn't going away. So eventually I just laid back down in bed. All of a sudden, whatever was in the closet sort of whooshed to my bed. I don't know how else to describe it. Whatever it was forced me down and held me down in the bed while snarling and growling. I was frozen at this point and couldn't do anything. Suddenly my bed started shaking and it seemed like it was trying to wrap me up in my bed like a taco. It was terrifying. I was able to break free of the bed and run out of the room eventually. I ended up sleeping on our couch in the living room where my parents found me the next morning. When I relayed to them what had happened, my dad, who was a doctor, a family practitioner, told me about night terrors. He convinced me that it was essentially a dream, and I ended up buying that explanation. Fast forward to about six months later. I had went through basic training and ended up being sent to Iraq during the initial invasion. I had finally been able to make a call home and I get a hold of my mom. She started apologizing almost immediately. It turns out that when my father was on call one night at the hospital, she was alone in their bed and she woke up at 3.15 feeling evil in her room. She proceeded to have almost the same exact experience that I did. She was able to run out of the room and she left the house and stayed with her friend until my dad got back. The next day, she asked the preacher to come and bless the house and put holy water and oil in all the doorways. She didn't do that when I had the problem, lol. So either my mom and I had a shared night terror or it's something else. She won't even talk about it to this day. <laughs>